quadratic drag. So I've bunch, done a bunch of uh, velocity dependent forces. The last video I looked at the motion of an object moving horizontally with a drag force that was proportional to velocity squared and there was no gravity. But now we want to do, whoop, oh, I dropped my chalk. We want to do uh, dropping with gravity. It gets a little tough though. I'll tell you right now, it gets a little bit tough. Let's just jump into it. So here's our uh, drag force. Remember, the negative is there. If you put the negative there and you want to write it as a vector, you're going to need that unit vector v hat. But we're going to be dealing with just dropping. So it's only going to be moving in the negative y direction, and that makes it a little bit easier. If you want it to go up and down, that's a problem. But we can deal with it later. So let's just go ahead and write down uh, the equation of motion, Newton's second law, for this case. So I have uh, mass times acceleration, which is dv dt. And that's going to be equal to the gravitational force, negative mg, plus cv squared. So it's plus because uh, the, grav the drag force is up because the object's been falling down. Okay. Now, we're going to, this is a difficult thing to deal with, so we're going to use a trick, the same trick we used before, terminal velocity. So at terminal velocity, the drag force and the gravitational force are the same. So mg is equal to cvt squared, where vt is the terminal velocity. That's the maximum it could be. Uh, so up here, I can write this as negative uh, cvt squared. So I'm going to run out of room, so let's just, let's just put all this... If I keep that up there, I'm going to run out of room. So I have m dv dt is going to be equal to negative c v t squared, that's the gravitational force, plus c v squared. That's my actual velocity. Now I'm going to factor out of here. Again, th this is one of those things where it's like you kind of know the tricks, right? You do it before. I'm going to factor out of this expression c v t squared. So this is going to be negative c v t squared times 1 minus v squared over v t squared. All right, so if I multiply that in, I get negative cvt squared. Over here, I get negative, I get plus cv squared. That's what I want. Now I'm going to divide both sides by the mass. Uh, dv dt is negative cvt squared over m, 1 minus vt over v or vt squared. <clears throat> now, I do have one more trick, right? Remember, we defined terminal velocity uh, as mg times is equal to cvt squared. So this is actually just g, right? That's, v, that's mg divided by m, so it's g. So it's just going to be equal to negative g uh, times 1 minus v squared over vt squared. And again, I can separate the variables. I can get all the v's on one side, all the t's on the other side. So I get dv over 1 minus v squared over vt squared is negative gt. Okay, that was the easy part. Now for the not so easy part. So we need to integrate both sides of, the, of this equation, and that side's easy to integrate, but that side's not. So the first thing we need to do is to see if I can get this in a form that is integratable. And so if I could get this as just some con a variable squared, so let's go ahead and say that u is v over vt. And if that's the case, du is dv over vt. So if I take the derivative. So I can replace this whole thing uh, with the following. I can say the integral of dv, I'm going to write that as vt du, vt du over 1 minus u squared, right? Because now I have v over vt squared is just u squared. And that's equal to the integral of negative g dt. Okay, that side's just easy. This side, uh, not so easy. So what, what you do in a situation like this is you can either just, I got my tangled up, you can either just, um, you know, use the internet. I like this my uh, standard math tables book. I've already looked up the, the integral, and it's number 17 right there. You see that? 
Okay. So that has dx uh, a squared minus x squared. Uh, and so here we have a is equal to 1. But that's going to give us 1 over a, which we already have, inverse hyperbolic tangent of x over a. So that's pretty easy, right? Inverse hyperbolic tangent, which you could write that in terms of logs too, but this is going to be easier. So I have, um, this is going to be equal to the tangent hyperbolic inverse of u, and this is going to be equal to negative g t plus some constant k. Oh, I had the vt right there too. Vt. Okay, uh, so now let's, because that was from over there, let's go ahead and put in our u. So I have inverse hyperbolic tangent of v over vt equals, I'm going to divide by vt, yeah, so negative, no, I'm going to leave it right there, equals negative g t plus k. Okay, uh, initial conditions, remember v of 0 equals 0 in this case, I'm going to say it's 0, so if I put in 0 right here and 0 right there, then that's 0, and so k is, has, has to be equal to 0. Again, that's going to make our life easier because we're releasing it from rest, and that's fine. So now I can divide by vt and then take the hyperbolic tangent of both sides. So I get v over vt equals negative g t. Oh, oh no, that's right. I got to take the, uh, the, it's going to be v is equal to vt times the hyperbolic tangent of negative gt over vt. Okay, so we have it. Now, you, this is integratable, so you could find the position as a function of time, but I don't want to do that because I don't really like dealing with uh, hyperbolic signs and tangents and all that stuff. Um, but I do want to plot this, and I want to plot this in, uh, in WebVPython. So I do have a problem there. So WebVPython does not have hyperbolic tangents, so we're going to have to make that function. So just as a reminder, if you can't remember, uh, the hyperbolic tangent of x is equal to e, e to the x minus e to the minus x over, I'm looking that up because I forgot, e to the x plus e to the minus x. So I can calculate that um, in my code. But I want to verify this numerically. So just a, a crash course numerically, right? If I break this into short time intervals, delta t equals 0 0.01, I need to pick a mass, 0, 0.0. I'm picking stuff here. C is 0 0.1, v0 is 0, y0 is 0. Then during that short time interval, delta t, I can calculate the acceleration. The acceleration is going to be equal to uh, the gravitational force negative mg plus c v squared over m. <clears throat> that's the same thing as that original equation. And then I can use that to say that that's, uh, that if the acceleration is constant, the velocity at the end of the time interval looks like this, right? That's the velocity update formula. And then I can update the position y2, y1 plus v2 delta t. And then I just keep doing that over and over again. Okay. Let's do it. One of the things that we want to look at is how far, how far do you have to drop it to get to terminal velocity, or at least close to terminal velocity, because uh, you can't get to terminal velocity. But let's go ahead and code this up in Python, and then we can move on to projectile motion with quadratic drag, which is maybe what you're waiting for. I don't know. And I did go through that fast because it's, it's pretty complicated. So, Okay, here we are. Web v Python from scratch. So I'm going to make a graph. Let's make the graph. Graph, uh, graph title equals, let's say, falling quadratic drag. Uh, X title is time. I'm going to change that in a little bit. Let's see that for, fine for now. Y title is V. And then I'm going to say width 
400, height 200. And then F1 is G curve. Color equals color.blue. Nope. Now I need my constants. G equals 9.8. M equals, what did I say it was? 0 0.05. C equals 0 0.1. V equals 0. Y equals 0. Um, I'm going to need, I'm going to go ahead and add in V0 equals 0 because I'm going to use that later. Uh, T equals 0. DT equals 0 0.01. So now what I want to do is actually define hyperbolic tangent uh, as a function. Just I think that'll make it easier. So def uh, tan h of x, right? So I'm going to give it an x value. It's going to return the value. So let's say x temp is going to be equal to the exponent, let's in parentheses, exponent of e to the x minus exponent negative x, all of that divided by exponent of x, is that right? I really forgot. Plus, yeah. Plus, plus exponent negative x. And then return xt. That's going to make things a little bit easier. OK. Now, oh, I need, uh, I need my terminal velocity. Let's, let's just calculate that up here. Uh, well, I'm going to need that for later. vt is going to be equal to uh, m times g, it's the square root. Square root of m times g over c. Okay, so let's do the numerical calculation. I'm going to have another graph up here. F2 equals g curve. Color equals color dot red. That's going to be my theoretical, but well, let's just do the other one first. So while t is less than 3, I just picked a, I just picked a number there. Uh, calculate the acceleration. A is going to be equal to uh, m times g minus c times v squared. No. Plus. Minus. Yep. OK. Now with that, oh, all of that divided by m. Now I can use that to update the velocity. v equals v plus a times dt. Update the position. y equals y plus v times dt. Ah. Uh, t equals t plus dt, update time, and then plot it. F1 dot plot v, tv. Let's see if it works. I didn't even save it. OK, that was scary for a little bit. So yeah, it does fall down. It has a negative, a negative y velocity. And then it reaches some terminal velocity right here. Uh, so of was at negative 2.2. Let's just print that out just to see if it if we get that correct. Uh, print v t equals v t meters per second. Okay, so that's a win. Now we double win if uh, we plot the velocity, the theoretical velocity as a function of time. This one I'm a little bit more sketch of because I have that hyperbolic tangent in there. But let's just go ahead and calculate it. V theoretical is going to be equal to VT. I'm looking at my equation right here. Hyperbolic tangent. This was times. This was great about functions. And then I could just put negative G times T divided by VT. It's not super sure it's going to work. F2 dot plot T vt. Notice I have v lowercase t for the theoretical velocity, v uppercase t for terminal velocity, just to make things dangerous. Let's run it. Okay, they're right on top of each other. I don't know if you look, but those two graphs are right on top of each other. You can kind of see the blue right there, but that's a win. That's a win in my book. Now let's just make one more graph. I want to plot uh, the magnitude of the velocity versus the magnitude of the position. So you can see how far it has to fall in order to reach terminal velocity. So let's, uh, that's pretty easy down here. I can change this uh, to, to meters. Let's call this y. I'm, maybe I just want to make it all positive because I don't really care. 
Um, okay, so that's going to be ABS. Let's just say negative, negative Y. And this is going to be negative V, right? Because I want them both to be positive. I don't know why. <clears throat> and this is going to be negative Y, negative V. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so this says that after it falls about, in this case, uh, you know, just just one meter or so, it's going to reach terminal velocity. This is, oh, I'm, I've got my thing scrolled. Uh, this is one of the things I've actually had to calculate before for, uh, for Mythbusters. You know, I used to do the science stuff for Mythbusters, the show. Um, and the question was, how far do you have to drop a human from a, like a crane or something so that they could reach terminal velocity, so they could simulate a, a terminal velocity person or ball or whatever. And so this calculation, I actually did this exact same thing. Um, let's, just, let's just increase the mass here to... Uh, point 0.1, just so we can see it, what that looks like. Um, it, it does take a little bit longer, not too much. Let's see. There we go. Okay, so it has to drop a lot further in order to reach terminal velocity, but that's that's how you can do that. And still, those two expressions, the theoretical and the numerical calculations, agree. So there you go. Falling object quadratic drag. It was tough, but we did it. The end.